Hello, my name is Richard Miller, and good afternoon, happy autumn, and welcome to Never Not Here. And uh, I've been saying the last few times I got online, uh, I'm so energized. And uh, it's kind of amazing. It's something you really don't do. It's just happening. There's a flow or an openness or something. Uh, it doesn't have to be hocus pocus or magic. Maybe it's just simply I've got a lot of plans and I've got a lot of ideas and somehow they seem to be energizing. And uh, I just feel very engaged and very in the flow and very open to everyone. And uh, really talking to everybody. Uh, I just was in a barbecue restaurant and I talked to a guy for about an hour and a half. Uh, just about life and about everything. And uh, I'm just saying to myself, uh, the barriers between humanity are coming down. And uh, I wonder, I'm just trying to promote that fact or say, well, let it be for everyone or uh, maybe just ask, is that the way it is for you? And, uh, and what to do about it? Of course, the only thing to do about it is to go talk to someone and, <laughs> and prove it to them too, you know. And uh, so I've been doing a few of these talks with, uh, I call them three-way talks, or we've been calling it These Amazing Times. And uh, I guess I don't need to get any more philosophical than that. Uh, please help me welcome Canella Michelle Myers from Vancouver. Hi, Canella. <laughs> Hi, Richard. Good to see you here today. Right. How about you? Are you feeling uh, the thrill of life? <laughs> Absolutely. Right now, yes. It's uh, just feeling a lot of vibration in this system and a brightness. Uh, feels like a, just a yesness, if that's an appropriate word. That's <laughs> that seems to be what's happening right here. And yeah. It's, um. That's really good, a yesness. Yes. <laughs> it, it, what it feels like um, directly is as if all the cells and everything are vibrating in an openness, almost like um, even though the sun isn't actually shining right now. <laughs> Just like how uh, you would turn towards the sun and, and open to warmth. That's what my whole, um, the cells of my body feel like right now. That's great. And let's just say hi to our, our, our third participant. Uh, help me welcome Ramana Spencer. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. <laughs> so we haven't talked yet, but uh, I understand that you've spent time in India and actually got your name from Papaji. It's true. You know, for a long time, that was kind of like a dream, you know, like a dream or a regret, a regret, because uh, during the 80s, I was actually free. And uh, and I would think, oh, my God, if I'd only go end up to see Papa G, <laughs> then what? <laughs> yeah. Yep. <clears throat> I've had thoughts like that about things. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I remember thoughts like that too, but I'm not so much uh, thinking of them anymore. You know, <laughs> they kind of all gone. You know, Richard, what you hear about these times and how things feel to be um, more open and, you know, connecting. I went with a girlfriend. Uh, she was in visiting from Calgary, and we were just at the, at the North Vancouver Quay here, and there was some uh, young man there that pointed to me and said, I love you. <laughs> and uh, then he said it again, you know, he 
some people would say maybe he's a little uh, mentally unbalanced or whatever, but I sure didn't feel like it was like genuine. He just like, I just went, yes. And, and then we ran into him again and again, he pointed to me and he said, I love you. <laughs> and he was there with, um, you know, his caregiver or whatever, but uh, it really, um, it, it was just so natural and okay. And he was talking away to people in the elevator and, and uh, people didn't turn away. You know, it seems like there might've been a time, I mean, who knows really, but he was so accepted in his openness and not having any uh, rules of how he's supposed to be um, with people, just emanating joy. And um, it, it just seemed like such a representation of just what you were saying that uh, not only his openness, but also the receptivity of people um, around him. God, that's exactly me. You know, I was thinking like, I don't know, I hope I can do it without being an institution, but <laughs> that's exactly what's happening. I, I tell you. Yeah. I mean, maybe we, it'd be a cool thing to just point to people, you know, in, in the shopping mall and just go, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sure, the first step, the first step is just to uh, view somebody and realize in yourself, gee, I love that guy. I love that well, guy. It, it was instant love, for yeah. sure. As soon as he, he, he said it, it was like, what else, what else could happen? <laughs> it's like, yes. Oh, it was so. Uh... So, yeah, love provoking love quite directly. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's really going around some of the subjects that have been uh, moving around in my mind, you know, because like that goes to, and it's kind of like the direct path right through, you know, because a lot, you know, um, it comes in our mind that things aren't right. Uh, exactly. You know, and it comes in our mind that uh, uh, even maybe the way the teaching is expressed, the wisdom teaching is not right, you know, something's missing, you know, okay, it comes in our mind that something's missing. Right. And uh, that guy doesn't really stop at that pause point. That guy went right through. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> right. That's the, the general situation of, um, that I see with just in general, like um, how the mind is programmed. It's, it's like the the basis seems to be on this belief that there's something wrong, Sp specifically that there's something wrong with me. And generally, historically, that has just, it doesn't get examined. It's one doesn't investigate their actual experience right now completely. It's, it's like all these strategies and stories assuming that something is wrong with me something needs to get fixed without actually noticing what the actual experience is right now Yeah, it's really such an easy and simple um, opportunity, this, as you say, Ramana, this right here to, um, as soon as there's any kind of, um, let's call it flack from the mind, <laughs> saying things should be in some other way, you know, something should change about this scenario that I'm in, um, just to stop and check to feel exactly what is occurring right here, right now, um, as it is, simply as it is, just as a person breathing in a chair or perhaps even right now listening to uh, this interview on a computer, uh, letting the sound come toward you and come into the system because you're already receiving everything. And in this reception, I mean, that's, uh, it's just so funny that the mind would, would attempt to categorize uh, the information as it comes and, and say, no, not that, yes to this. <laughs> and somehow we've been trained to believe what the mind has to say. <laughs> um, but that can, that can change as soon as the mechanism is uh, 
is seen and the direct experience of allowing yourself to feel, well, what really is true right here, right now? Is this okay? Beautifully said. So I use the word something's missing. And then and it's just coming to me now that if we would say, oh, nothing's missing, well, that wouldn't be true either. Right. It's, I'm sorry, I didn't no, go ahead. pause. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about saying, it's not about uh, adding more lines, adding more uh, data to the program. Because then, it, I mean, it's like it's all still going. It's like then you have like this belief, this under underlying belief that something's wrong. And then there's this attempt to um, change that, to change the program. But it's still all based on the belief that there's something wrong. It's like it's to find out what's true. Right now. So right now, nothing's wrong and nothing's right. Because there's, I mean, no, there's really no judgment. And so there's nothing perfect, there's nothing imperfect. And there's all these judgment words uh, that are human words really don't apply. But if we say it's all perfect, uh, everything is satisfaction, or, or we, maybe we don't say that. We say uh, uh, source is not dissatisfied with anything. Source doesn't care. So then all those words really don't have no meaning. It's coming to me to say right now because it, and really there is no caring or uncaring. There's no... Uh, and so it sounds one-sided, like some, somehow, it, uh, for those that are listening to it and trying to make sense of uh, it's all perfect, they, uh, that must come from like a static view of the well, universe. It, the, the, the interesting and beautiful part is that there's still a human being in expression in this um, uncaring and caring, or neither absolute, <laughs> uh, infinite space of the nothingness you know and um it's just what happens when somebody says okay you know something's wrong okay let's say that um you know it's good to put an example in that there's maybe there's not enough money so i can do whatever it is my heart says would be beautiful um and it, it's how we respond to that to then look at our details and say oh there's not enough and then attempt to grab it on the outside or to go for it as if it's someplace out there. Um, whereas, you know, there can be a number of different ways to be with that. There can be a settling in and just going, okay, well, really, you know, is there enough? Has there been enough money? You know, is there enough right now? Am I fed? Am I sheltered? Um, am I warm? Um, you know, is everything all, all right, right in this moment? Is there enough? There can be that. And then there can also be, um, if, if it still doesn't feel uh, loving, uh, then to, to imagine what it would feel like, you know, to use, <laughs> to use the, the, the uh, invitation from yourself that something looks wrong. Um, and instead of believing that it's wrong, use it just as an invitation from yourself to go, okay, so what would it feel like to, that there'd be more than enough money, that there'd be more than enough um, food or whatever the situation might be, and to actually experience that, allow yourself to feel, what would that feel like inside? Um, and then spending time feeling that, that's the vibration that will actually create uh, the apparent outside details to uh, come in to sync with that. Is that a kind of a cause and effect you're talking about? Well, it's if, if, if we're all, um, which we are, <laughs> uh, energetic, uh, I mean, what do the um, scientists say, like a, a hologram of, of energy that's, that's mirroring the whole universe, uh, the universe mirroring what we are inside. You know, there really isn't a person here. It's just illusion. It's a hologram. Um, it is an energy. That's all that can be said is that there's vibration here 
and we can go more and more deeply with the reality of that. Um, and what is this vibration? I mean, from here with this canela, it is loving. Uh, and I mean that like it's received as loving. It's it, and that there's no question of that um, because of how I experience it. it. It it's holding me, holding this hologram to the point where this little human just goes, "Oh, wow, <laughs> lovely." Um, but that's been you know allowed uh, to be embraced. There's been an allowing uh, gradually, step by step in in her own way so each person needs to follow their own way you know and, and uh, that. let's say we want to get back to the basics you know and let's say okay the basics are uh you know <laughs> particles or something like that or the basics are like i'm a hologram you know but i mean it seems like it's so so abstract why do i have to start with being a hologram just let me start with being richard james miller and, uh, you know, and then uh, I, maybe I can find a hologram mm -hmm. if I find it. And, if, uh, and uh, I, don't get, I don't get that that's part of the basics. <laughs> well, it, okay. it is if, you know, go ahead, Ramana. I was going to say that there seems to be a really popular um, misconception that, that the absolute is, you know, there's like, okay, there's this absolute that's uncaring or seems uncaring. And then there's, you know, the human side of it. And, and there's somehow at odds that somehow like, you know, it's one or the other. And my experience is that in, in like entrusting and like opening to the absolute, the character is actually finally, like the emergency brake finally goes off. Cause it's like, sure, there's, there's, there's things at stake in, in this, in this experiment and this, and this, um, there's, there's all kinds of things at stake, but there's nothing that fundamentally is at stake for me because, because dropping through seeing that this this life could this life could this body could be ripped apart and fundamentally it doesn't really do anything to what i am that frees up all of this angst all of this oh my god this emergency situation here that if i don't get it right if i don't fix this then i'm not going to be okay that that takes the emergency break off and all of the, the work, the healing, the vibrational alignment, all of this stuff comes much easier. And the character is finally allowed to be fully the character with all of its idiosyncrasies, all of its you know, imperfections, if you want to call it that. It finally gets a, a chance to uh, express itself because when there's so much writing on it it's it's locked up it's locked up in a death grip it can't even move so if, if it does seem to succeed you know be successful it's like it, it, it's kind of still tight inside yeah so then maybe what we're talking about is like a, a mental structure that says uh this is really urgent. This is really, I mean, it's an interpretation, right? Because who knows what's urgent? We see things and, uh, you know, you could be swimming along and see a great white shark, but he's not coming after you, you know, so it's not urgent. It's just a, a view into the greater parts of life that a very privileged view. And, uh, I get out of there, though. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> don't flail around too much, though, you know. <laughs> Well, so anyhow, let me see. Let me put this out for you and say this could be a basic, you know, like a basic is uh, uh, our mood and our energy level, which hence is the emergency break or the non-emergency break, our energy level, somehow comes from uh, one of those mental structures that we say, you know, and we don't even say it. Maybe it's like planted there somehow. So then it's conditioned, you know, some conditioned mental structure. I, I seem to notice that in myself and in others, you know, and uh, I don't know if there's a, such a case where that's not true, but
but I see it where it is true. And uh, every energy level in myself and every mood and every um, lack of joy or, you know, kind of concentrated uh, moment uh, somehow comes from a description that I'm talking about and that I'm set telling myself about what I see out here. You know, that uh, society's no good or that uh, taxes are too high or that my job is at risk or uh, whatever I say, you know, uh, nobody loves me. Uh, any kind of thing that I say is going to give me a, a mood and, a, and uh, actually an, an energy level. And that's what I would call the handbrake, you know, not so much the, uh, I don't know, how did you say to take the handbrake off by saying that it's not so important? And saying that yeah, things no, aren't perfect or good, you know. That's not what I said at all. No, that tell me then. Yeah. Thing to do with telling yourself. I mean, it can be helpful to reinforce. It's like, you know, you're actually getting into some concepts that are kind of flowing in a different direction. They're not, they're not uh, as negative. But what I'm actually speaking about is, is not telling yourself that things are perfect, but, but actually experientially, being with your actual experience right now and it has its own its own it reveals itself at its own rate it's it's just becoming a lover of of truth it has nothing to do with the story of you know telling yourself a better story but i mean it's not a bad idea to tell yourself a better story <laughs> If that's you know what you have to work with, but well, it re it reveals itself at its own rate. A beautiful th a statement, a very beautiful statement, and maybe that rate is the rate that the story deconstructs, the one that was uh, holding the energy back. And maybe it's not you that's deconstructing the story. Somehow it's just seen through. Yeah, and well, the I mean, moment. You... Go ahead, sweetie. Yeah. I, I guess, you know, that um, what you said earlier kind of meets that a little bit. Nobody loves you. I mean, <laughs> in the nothingness, nobody here, you know, nobody does love you. Um, it seems to come in as love in connection with the humanness and allowing the expression of it um, just in its natural, exactly how it is. Uh, way it's you know just complete acceptance of the moment of what actually really is occurring and, and like Ramana says if, if or, or invited um, to check out what the real experience is um, instead of following the habit of believing what the mind is offering that, that something is wrong no I see value to that When I say that it reveals itself at its own rate, um, that could be that could be taken in in a couple of ways. It could be taken in as, oh my God, I'm screwed. It's like, when is it going to reveal itself to me? Or it can be taken in as this relaxation and, and this this like um, ease about the angst, letting the angst just start to relax, to get somewhere, to experience a particular state, to to relax the grip of... There's this way of approaching realization that is based on this angst of getting something or getting away from something that is is completely driven by the mind most people will get really frustrated <laughs> a few people can seem to be able to have sort of a limited success of being able to experience like the taste of the space or an impersonal kind of nothingness that maybe there's some peace maybe but it, it's the it's still based on getting away from something right. it's still based on this idea that there's something wrong right 
Now, to me, what you said was so well-spoken and kind of rare, actually. It comes at its own rate. It really means there's nothing to do. And then you could dr relate it to grace or, 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 you know, people say a word like that. Well, there's nothing to do. It just means, okay, whoosh, I can relax, yeah. right? Exactly. And actually, that is most effective, actually. And then the part you said that anxiety seems to be like where I need it, I want it, I want it, I want it. And people tell you, no, you've got to want this with everything. But somebody told me something the other day that was really marvelous because he said that gets you like one third of the way, <laughs> you know. <laughs> because until you really love truth at any cost, you know, then you can love truth at any cost. And somehow that brings you the other two thirds, right? But when you're wanting, 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 uh, to know, you say to know truth, really, it's wanting, wanting, wanting to avoid suffering, and you're not about to give up what you need to give up to to uh, uh, be free. But in the between time, you can feel the wanting energy itself. And instead of acting on it, just feel it as the angst or, or whatever that really, really feels like. To, as soon as you notice yourself wanting anything to feel that energy, that wanting energy, that's actually, it's part of what is, it's part of accepting, you know, if there's some, any kind of idea that something's wrong, then it's noticing the felt sense of what does something wrong feel like, because that's what's here, if it is. Um, like, it, it's so literal, it's so completely encompassing and inclusive of everything, it's not supposed to look any particular way, um, but the wanting energy or the angst energy can lead the person right into themselves um, to use that, as I like to invite, as an invitation um, to be with it, to be with that as it rises. Is it, uh, is it easier to, to feel that angst energy if you don't quite believe in it so hardly, so hard? Well, it, it's not, it's not, you know, it, it's not about what the idea of what the wanting is saying it wants. That's another layer. That's the mind, you know, offering. It's to actually notice first off to diagnose yourself and say, wanting is happening. Okay, well, what does this wanting actually feel like? Stop right in that, you know, uh, wanting something to be different, wanting something, wanting somebody to be a certain way. Just what does that feel like actually? this wanting somebody to be different not thinking it but stopping in the midst of it and feel it um and i mean it's those times when it feels most frustrating that can be the stronger energies that will lead you even more deeply into um whatever it is except you know accepting that um into a more open open space of yourself at least this is what uh, my own finding and and um seems to support I think I uh, the I think I found it uh, easier to to rest with that and feel what that wanting feels yeah. like because uh, somehow intellectually I also determined that any kind of wanting uh, anything that's not here has to be held as a concept in this moment and so I'm wanting a concept and basically uh, I'm not wanting reality so really I I took it not to be uh, a force towards something like a desire, but I, I took it to be more of a fear or a repulsion from this. Just get me out of here is mostly what all wantings are to me, and and then I'm just real curious to say, well, what is it? What is it that that I'm trying to escape? You know, <laughs> what could it be? Um, yeah. So I really like the words you just used. I like how you described um, that. <laughs> can can um, excuse me. So I got excited when you were talking. <laughs> so my experience is that uh, it's never, it's never ever going to work. You can't. Here's an analogy: you can't beat life at chess. It's it's going to keep coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. So there's it's not going to be possible to just make it go away or get away from it. You can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I'm saying, all desires are fake. Uh, no, they're they're directional. Um, 
it, everything is part of source. So even desires are part of source, but it's to, to feel it first before acting on it. Um, just feel it as an energy of desire where you are right here. You just, um, it, it, that's one of the mistakes is that, you know, something occurs, we desire something. And, and so it's immediately to go outside to attempt to go outside and, 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 and get that or to, um, you know, whether it's the house and the white picket fence and all that sort of stuff. Um, when really it's, it's just desire. Like it's just so much more simple to go, Oh, there's a desire occurring and, and feel into that and look, see what it's expressing uh, to you right in those moments. I'm very okay with saying uh, there's a de desire here and let's just go in and feel it and maybe even express it so that we can even feel it more or so that it can be become really clear. But I'm not really very okay with saying that desire is part of source or from source because I don't think there is any <laughs> desire in the absolute. There's no, well, all well, those things on. are overlays, you know. Like, where uh, is it coming from, Richard? It's just a the feeling that's coming from okay, source well, where, or something where or it's a contraction, huh? It comes, <laughs> where does it come from, from conditionings. Totally conditioning. Where does, where does it's come conditioning. From? Like all of it. You know? the, the mistake is, is that as if one part is part of the absolute and one part is not, and all of it is, the conditioning even is, and all we can do is notice the conditioning is here, and then open to it and take a look and just, you know, hold it in, in our hand almost and say, oh, look at this, conditioning. Well, this is cool. And instead of continuing with the conditioning, to explore it, to, you know, in each moment that it arises um, with more and more you know, as a person becomes more and more aware of what's really going on in reality, um, it, it reveals itself and it becomes easier and, and well, a lot more enjoyable to, to be with rather than just following the conditions. It's not about getting rid of anything because that, that um, it's pretty much what Ramana said earlier that, you know, that it, it really, you can't get away from any of it. You can't call something wrong and say, well, that's conditioning, and so I'm not going to have that anymore, because it's arriving, and, and it will actually lead the person in particular directions of where their essence, that it's appropriate. You know, once it's no longer being resisted, it becomes enjoyable, and you can even see it as a friend once, once you open to it. Yeah, no, I see that, you know, because like I wasn't trying to say conditioning should be dismissed, I was actually saying that conditioning, once you see it's a conditioning, it's easier to kind of be curious about it and, and look at it, you know. And I don't mind saying conditioning, all, everything comes from source, so that even the conditioning comes from source. But I sure don't like to say desires come from source. It sounds like a little UPS package from God or something like that. It is. <laughs> <laughs> totally. No, it isn't. It's, it's just it's, the conditioning it comes that comes, it's available. No, but there can be a desire. I mean, some of them are, are smaller desires, like... Oh, the bladder says something, and, and so there's a desire to go to the bathroom, right? Well, it's, it starts up as a, you know, and you respond to it. It's how you respond <laughs> to it. It might be that, um, you know, you've been on your own for a while. You're a single person in the world, and, and there rises a desire to see what being in a relating would be like. And, and so there, it's not to say, I mean, I, I you know, and I explored that one myself. I kept letting it go and letting it go, this whole you know, would, desire would show up and I would let it go because this whole idea of being in a relating when I was already totally happy with being with Canela um, seemed odd, but it kept on, kept on recurring until I said, okay, what's with this? What if I opened to this and said, okay, universe, you know, if there's a relating that's supposed to happen, you know, show me the way. And then the steps arrive under my feet or invitations come and I find myself in connection with someone and, uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh, I think it's happening, <laughs> or I notice it's happening. And uh, somewhere along the line to remember that I asked for it <laughs> is also helpful in uh, accepting uh, <laughs> when you're allowing yourself to share yourself with, uh, with another. If we want to call this uh, wisdom, right, or wisdom teaching, and uh, I don't know, we're talking about what's missing or what's not missing. There's nothing missing, right? Is that what we're saying? What do you mean? 
Well, I mean, if you say something's wrong or something's urgent, then something's missing. Of course, you could just say, well, you know, one thing not missing is there's not plenty of opportunity, so that's not missing. I don't know. Is that count or, or is that too? Uh, uh, is that uh, evidence of lack, opportunity? <laughs> you go, Ramana. <laughs> 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 Opportunity is not missing. So then there's always something well, to do, right? Well, I would just say that, <laughs> I mean, first of all, it's a hypothetical. I mean, it's, it's very removed from the actual experience. So I like to keep the, the conceptual structures of um, pointing very, very fluid, but all, yeah, very simple. And also very practical, like not about how I'll deal with something in the future, but but about being present now. It's like it always comes back to what is my actual experience right now. We can venture a little bit into some theoretical well. things, but what, what <laughs> that question just struck me completely like, like up here somewhere like not grounded in like You're actually right. no but opportunity is simple too you know because like i just noticed canella was small and you were large so i readjusted her camera there was opportunity to adjust her camera right okay yeah and now the sure. result is going to be different because uh somehow it's going to yeah. be more homogenous that's so all the invitations yeah now that, that yeah. that's more remote, the, the idea that there's going to be a result and that it's going to be more homogenous, but uh, it is actually. <laughs> <laughs> so where did where does the impulse to do something like to adjust the camera, like to adjust the camera, that impulse, where does that come from? It must be conditioning. I don't, I don't it must mean, be conditioning, I don't, you know. I don't mean theoretically. I mean, like actually watching the impulses now. Yeah, I don't know. I just get up and do it. And first I excuse myself and then I do it, you know, and then the impulse is just, I don't know. But it's a conditioning that says I can do it and that also I can, I can do it without offending you and I can do it without uh, making a pause in the, in, the sh in the recording and blah, 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 you know. The, I, mean, well, I would say that's responding, though, actually, a conditioning. Like, you, there's some noticing that happened. Noticing came in, and you noticed that um, I was smaller, right? And then you responded to that uh, accordingly. That's you happening. I wouldn't say that that's, uh, I don't know what was happening in the process, but that's what it sounds like. It seemed very natural, like uh, you were just responding to the moment of, of this, and you took, you know, you just followed the thread of what was happening and voila I, d I don't know precisely how it precisely would be. i don't see it as conditioning or how you're connecting it to conditioning well conditioning means that i you know i know what happens when they're different sizes and it's uh, uh you know it comes out bad you know worse <laughs> or like not like i like it you know and so then i'm conditioned to like it one way and not like it another way or you know whatever that's i'm not trying to say it's the right move or anything like that but it's just <laughs> Just way I the way I work, you know, the way I uh, uh, I'm wired. But, and I guess the difference might be is that there was no push on that. It didn't seem like you were making it happen or insisting that it happened that way. You were, it seemed like responding, and from your own experience in the past, just you know, offering the best that you know how. Well, that's true, is, but I insisted you know? too because like I'm the king, you know. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you have some push on yourself there? No way. I yeah. Did it. Okay. Well, I mean, I believe that's the difference. Is is it uncomfortable? It didn't seem like you were wrestling or struggling with anything. You just made a decision. You did it quite naturally. It fit. It was in the flow of of the conversation. Um, now I'm bigger, so I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it might sound like we're fooling around, but in a way, we're talking about what you know, what, what is doing and what is action and what is. You know, and we're fooling around. Talking around, you know, the <laughs> things that are... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
I mean, having fun, why not? Yeah, because it's so easy to say that you're not the doer, so there's no doing, and then, you know, it's only a thought doing, and uh, I don't know, people get so wound up, you know? I mean, I'm, I was getting wound up in your hologram, to tell you the truth. <laughs> 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 so well, it's just a, it's a another way to point to the illusion, right? right it is right, an illusion. Right, right. They've just proven that scientifically was all I was pointing to, but you can get upset about it. Yeah, if like. <laughs> yeah well, I will. Okay, like, why do I even have to know it's an illusion? Or do, is that helpful? Maybe that is helpful, you know? I'm well, not saying it freedom. isn't, you know? That's the freedom to then allow yourself to just be, because if it's all illusion, it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, yeah. But no, that, you know, that, that can't compute, though, because, you know, world pain, we... Then you just have to say, well, that's an illusion too, you know. Yeah, it is an illusion too, and it it's doesn't like matter. You did the, doesn't matter. You changed, well, no, you changed the um, video screen. One was way bigger, and one was smaller. It's where can you um, respond if you're responding to that um, appearance of world hunger? If that triggers something inside of you, then it's to respond accordingly to whatever shows up next in you. But some people it does show up, and in some people it doesn't. Okay, <laughs> and that's not show that <laughs> well. Was. You know, changing the video screen now we're really messing around. But you know, you, I was just reading in the, I was just reading that uh, in the last four years, 14 million homes got foreclosed on in the U.S. So then that's like 50 million people. So California just got lopped off, and uh, we were in a war, and we lost California. At least those people lost their homes and their property. And uh, you know what? We didn't notice. You know, it just didn't notice it. And it's all a thought and it doesn't exist. So that was the excuse for not noticing. May I? You're on. Yep. <laughs> okay. So this, um, the, the, all the suffering in the world was a big theme for me. Um, that included very much at its... its core like all the suffering that I had experienced and in, in the lifetime and um, <laughs> it's one that's mostly pretty much evaporated and what hasn't evaporated is the is the love what hasn't evaporated is the the, res the response inside of me to respond and, and naturally, you know, there's naturally like a res response. There's naturally, there's like less insulation actually to the pain of the world. There's less insulation. Like things before, it was like it felt so, it felt with that angst of not knowing that what I am is much bigger than my story of who I am. With that angst, that really sort of shuts me down as far as to how I'm able to be open to the pain of the world, how I'm able to let the heart, the human heart break. And so it's like, it's actually, my experience is actually by open, by um, seeing clearly, by opening to the absolute, it's it's actually I'm actually more intimate with what everyone else is, you know. <laughs> what everyone, yeah. You know, I I don't really want to say what everyone else is feeling because I don't want to interpret what everyone else is feeling. But I can feel energetically the contraction and the heart breaks with. Right. I mean, you know, that's not really an interpretation, is it? Because, I mean, we reflect each other. We can just feel it. It doesn't take a psychic or some genius to figure out how another person's feeling, does it? Uh, I, I want to be careful with that one because uh, energetically, on a raw way, no. I would say no. But the story around it is totally different. Without the story, you just know that that's uh, cramping up. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, that's very beautiful. Uh, actually, the only reason I'm probably talking about this is because I'm just not very long ago kind of looking at, at my own pain and my resistance to feeling others' pain. And actually, I think it was Canela that got me into it because she just, 
I just, she, what did you say? You said if there was, there's some technology that you were referring to that uh, energy, the energy that comes up from pain and from uh, injustice and so on actually can be, can be transformed. And Absolutely. I just realized that there's, we don't, nobody talks about the technology of transforming an energy like that. And actually that's the most creative thing is what's happening in the world and the energy that comes from what's, you know, that arises from what's happening in the world is probably the most creative spark and creative force and that could ever possibly exist. And since we don't know what to do with it, uh, we, we try to hide it and, and avoid it and uh, deny it and, uh, and justify it and say it's perfect and all these things because we don't know what in the heck to make of it. And yet, you know, what, what Ramana shared uh, just moments ago about allowing himself to feel the pain uh, when it came his way uh, in openness without insulation but to let himself feel that from where he is or you know even imagined how that might feel um, not to stay in that but to let it pass through the system is a transforming of energy um, also in the invitation to um, feel the wanting energy that transforms it it's it's in attempting to do something with it or um follow what the mind does to respond to it um those those are the only mistakes um feeling it it will lead a person um wherever it leads the tricky part about saying this is that it, it's much more obvious with real examples um of people transforming energy um when they stop and just feel um, like you did uh, that time, you know, you felt the actual resistance and in feeling the resistance, uh, just opening to it and letting the rest of the whatever's being experienced sort of have a back seat and just feeling that um, it will move and expose and express itself to you and that is the transformation. Well, let's talk about a concrete example of pain in the world and how that uh, engenders uh, transformation. But it sounds like you're just saying that the, the, the mere feeling of this, this energy is, is enough tr uh, transformation or that does the trick. Well, uh, there is an example if you're game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because we, t we touched on something in a conversation we had last week uh, where you did say that there was quite a bit of resistance in allowing people to support you financially in what you do here with Never Not Here. Is that true? Is that resistant resistance that you pointed to earlier, is it present right now? Uh-oh. Oh, you shut me off. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a little resistance. <laughs> Let's just get rid of her. <laughs> um, so is that present in your body as I, as I invite that? Um, but first, is this all right to explore this with you right here, right now? It doesn't feel like it's missing. In other words, the fact that I'm not and I'm, uh, commercializing what I do doesn't feel like a missing component. And so then well, it doesn't have a lot of feeling to it. Uh, you know, in other words, uh, if I thought I needed it or I wanted it, uh, then it would feel like it was missing. And then uh, if I think that I don't want it, uh, then you could say, well, that must be some kind of like a uh, syndrome you're running there, you know, like you, you why don't you want it, you know, and uh, well, I'm going from the details of like on your home page, you did invite people to support your trip to Australia. And um, I was suggesting to you that maybe just simply pointing out that, you know, here's an opportunity if people want to offer some support. And what I was suggesting is that the people themselves may want to and feel good themselves about sending in 10 or 15 dollars towards your trip and the equipment and all that and then at that time you admitted some resistance to uh inviting people well i did i invited them i mean it's on the front page and then um you know the first i did it kind of like okay actually the reason i was very uh i mean there's reasons you know i mean if, <laughs> uh, can you count on reasons or yeah, reasons are no good you know <laughs> well what, what i'm what i'm inviting is so anyhow what uh, are these reasons you know like one is that well, no, i i'm on television the reasons. i'm yeah, on not, television not the, actual, huh? the reason right now to not feel this energy because really remember everything's illusion 
the well, people I mean, watching uh, this, the... you know, it's really, really all illusion. And there's all there is, is this awareness that you are right here, right now. And the actual experience of this system that you, you know, as awareness is, this is your playground, so to speak, this system that you are. And so in this system, as we speak about this topic, there may be a response or a reaction inside energetically, and there may not be. So that's what I'm asking. Is there anything that shows up inside your system with the idea of allowing people to uh, donate to Never Not Here? Yeah, I'd say yes. Okay, where whereabouts? Oh yeah, I gotta find it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's pretty well on uh, you know on the back burner. It doesn't really flare up very often. Yeah, yeah, we're inviting it to come to the front burner here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is this is the transformation, right? This is where something that's come up, and it shows up a few times, and we can put it on the back burner and put it on the back burner, and and then um, you know. You asked for a direct example, and it's just what occurred. It occurred to me <laughs> in this moment. And so, you know, it's all happening naturally. <laughs> but it did come from last week, right? <laughs> um, well, but the original pointing that there was something that was happening or something that responded or reacted inside your system, um, and you you shared that that was true, that definitely um, there was resistance. And so... My curiosity in this moment was just to see, you know, is it present right now? And if so, um, are you willing to uh, explore it and allow it to be the transformation that we were, the example of transformation that we were speaking about? It's very conflicted in me. You know, I mean, it's really a rat's nest. Beautiful. So just feeling the rat's nest, saying hello to it, and relaxing the rest of the body open to the rat's nest, whatever that area is that you have found that is shown up here. And what's happening with it? What's happening with this rat's nest? Is it still appearing as a rat's nest? Well, I mean, even a rat's nest, even a rat's nest, you know, I mean, it doesn't really mean that there's a lot of pain to it. It just means that, no. that there's so many overlays on it that, you know, it's hard to pick one that really would make sense to me. And each well, one makes sense a little bit. And, yeah. and, uh, and I, I would say, like, leaving sense aside. <laughs> well, I mean, when I take <laughs> and, one that has, okay, when I take one that I can feel like I adopt, then I get a feeling for right away, you know, on that one. And another one will have a different feeling. Another one will have a different feeling. And now you're saying there's some kind of pure feeling right in the middle of all that with all those gone. Well, with all oh, those no, gone, oh, no. I'm I think saying, I'm saying just no, no need to actually make sense of it. Actually let it unfold, the rat's nest and all its layers, however it shows up. Just be with the feeling of it, the experiencing of it. No, you know, and if, if, if something recognizes something, just let the making sense of it um, be just aside. Understanding will come afterwards. It's more just really allowing this space. You're allowing space for this rat's nest to speak itself fully, and you're here to simply hear by feeling uh, what what's happening with it as the layers expose themselves. Um, is to keep coming back to the felt sense of it right here, right now. Where would you say it is in your body? Where does it show up? 
Is there a location? Doesn't seem like it, you know. I mean, I'm so used to projecting it, right? Mm -hmm. I would just, anyway, I'll look at all you, you know. Uh, I'm looking at the audience now and saying, uh, it's your problem. <laughs> you guys figure it <laughs> out, you know. If you are never not here, just take it. That's all there is to it. And oh, uh, yeah. period, you know. Oh, it's, and this is where it's interesting because <laughs> uh, it's, from here, it seems like it's an invitation for people to support um, you in what you're doing and going to Australia and interviewing more folks that may offer support for people to fall more and more into who they are as Grace. I mean, that's a beautiful thing, what you, what you offer as your expression. And people may... <laughs> But it's from not separate heart. from me. It's not separate from me. Mm. It's really right. Not, but, but you know, it's not separate from me. So it doesn't. It could never be not here. You know, it's never not here. And so then, I mean, it's not for sale because how can I take it or, or take it away or, or give it give it? Please. <laughs> so, I just want to um, bring your attention to the resistance to just hanging out in your experience right now. The in interpretations are actually a form of insulation. So how are you, how are you right now? I guess I'm very puzzled. So what does very puzzled feel like immediately on an experiential level without the label puzzled? quite okay <laughs> it's quite okay there's really no there's no feeling like I got to get out of here or nothing I mean it's quite, quite okay actually yeah it's kind of a little bit sweet maybe yeah it is <laughs> I don't know maybe that's the only thing that could have possibly stopped me dead in my tracks you know this canal is too much <laughs> Alive in your tracks. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just more of yourself, yeah. Right. It's just more of who you are. It's 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 beautiful in in its play. Exactly how it is. It has, you know, all of its. Of course, of course, it would show up exactly as it has given your experience and and who you are, and then allowing yourself to feel it as energy um, as Ramana invited this um, this is it and it, it can transform into something a little more easy to be with um, and so is it okay then to <laughs> then ask folks who feel to to um, donate to never not here if they feel that's appropriate to support your trip to Australia um, that can be small, small amounts whatever somebody feels uh, is appropriate for them. Uh, do you have a yes for that? Is that okay, Richard? <laughs> do I have to say it? 
Well, your yes is is. Hey, you is guys beautiful. could give me money, you know, anytime. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Do it. <laughs> you like it. <laughs> 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 All right, I, I hope okay. I got that one over. Maybe that'll <laughs> maybe that'll put me over the hump, right? <laughs> it's all support for its own self. Sure. Somehow that doesn't really, you know, I don't get a, a, such a good juicy feeling out of that as I do talking about mm. 14 million so foreclosures, let's... you know. <laughs> 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 then I think really I got to, you know, then I then I get an energy. Yeah, you're here. Okay. So again, this energy this not juiciness without the label that it's something not not as good. What is your actual experience? Just right now. Not what it should be, shouldn't be. I'm feeling very whole and very, very, you know, very complete in this conversation and being connected with you too and being connected with whoever will be watching this. I'm feeling very whole and complete and, and, uh, I don't think any argument or any interpretation could could de be deteriorate that feeling. I don't know. I can say them, you know, and I can act them out. But it really doesn't erode anything. Contracted energy is just joy or peace or whatever you want to say that hasn't recognized itself yet. And the way to discover it isn't to say, oh, it's just joy, but just this, simply this, to invite it. Yeah, I'm a dismisser. The body, <laughs> the body, and it, it. There's a certain, obviously, there's a certain amount of. Uh, Should I sit up straight? A little, a little amount of. Uh, there's, I mean, there's certainly something going on with the body. It's not to deny that we're experiencing the body. But there's an artificial distinction that we end at the end of the body. That there's some place where one of us ends and another one begins. It's simply interpretation. And it's not true in my actual experience.
think I'm uh, at a loss for words. <laughs> Richard rendered speechless. Whoa. <laughs> That's impossible, right? <laughs> <laughs> and yet here, you know, expression happening. That's beautiful. <laughs> here you are. <laughs> It's funny, I was kind of like, when I was saying that, you know, on the beginning, when we were talking about transformation, and energy coming up and all that, and I was thinking, okay, well, that, that transformation would look a certain way. It would look like, uh, you know, you see things, and then and first you don't want to see it, and you want to kind of shield yourself from it and push it away. And then when you let it in, then you say, oh, hey, I could do this. Hey, I could do that. And it would come into a doing, see? So then you put this on, uh, you, you propose this, and then what came up was an undoing, right? <laughs> like, no, I don't want to do anything about that, you know? Nothing came up to do, you know? There was no doing. Everything was just fine. And so then that took me by surprise, you know? <laughs> and it all keeps happening. And like from being, doing isn't a confliction. It's like a natural, it's a, it's a passion or a, flowering and that's that's one of the differences is 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 receiving it as a happening as something that is occurring just rising and you're part of that rising equally with everything that is it, it can look like from the perspective of the mind that there is a doing you know, there is the doing of this interview, perhaps. Um, but in the full the, it let go ness, the openness, it's just um, speaking itself, it's being itself, um, and all of it, every little bit, that's, that's actually what is occurring. Um, it's, it's a happening. Um, within nothing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that adds that concept again. But you know, but it, but it's just the truth. It's like it's suspended in nothing. Uh, awareness expresses itself uh, exactly as as it is, including the human system, each and every one. Remind me a little of what we said, um, uh, like in the beginning, I guess we were talking about awakening and we just said something that happens at its own time or? Um, what I was speaking about was, was the, the way that the construct of all the busyness and, and um, all of the contraction seems to, be, well, what was seemed like this hard, solid thing becomes soft at its own rate. Right now, the moment is actually always free and clear, but all the angst falls away by itself at its own rate and simply beginning to rest and invite what was once held away into your heart. Well, I guess I'm, I'm feeling that, you know, like in these last few weeks, there's no angst or there's no, uh, there's no anxiety either for me or what I, you know, what happens here or what seems to happen or however we have to say that. <laughs> and a huge energy is left over. 
And it doesn't even feel like an energy. It just feels like a uh, non-tiredness. And then just keep going, keep going. You know, not a pushing and uh, a forcing. And uh, in a sense that, I don't know what I'm trying to prove or nothing. I'm not trying to do anything. I'm just realizing that I could do two of these talks a day. I mean, it's, uh, you know... <laughs> In fact, I'm doing two tomorrow. <laughs> one on Friday and one on Sunday and one on Monday. And who knows, maybe another one will get jammed in there. And uh, I don't know. I'm not even doing anything. Like, it's not worth a nickel. I mean, I wouldn't even want to, you know, our, our <laughs> old discussion of selling it, you know, or saying that, hey, that's worth something. I mean, it's just happening. I'm just uh, as a, as a, Amazed as you are. I really would say that this is not worth anything. I mean, no, I don't mean it that way. I don't mean it's not worth anything. I just mean it's not worth, you know. Well, so is money different than another kind of energy? Is money not a form of energy? Uh. <laughs> I guess I have enough. I don't know what. <laughs> I got enough energy to do this, you know. <laughs> and uh, who knows? I don't want to go back to that one, actually. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Beautiful honesty. <laughs> <laughs> I think we gave it enough, you know. <laughs> I, I do want to just add one little thing because you had said that, but it. Uh, it it's just interesting to me that it would show up as if it was selling something to you because uh, I'm just surprised that that would occur with you at all because it, it didn't seem to be well, about I mean, that to me. I'm just such a business. So Maybe that's it. My back, my conditioning is so much a businessman that I mean, that's all I think of, <laughs> mm. but not, I don't think of it here. This is like a tremendous liberation. Mm -hmm. Happening with ease. Yeah. Beautiful. I get so much out of engagement in, in, in interacting, and I suppose that's one thing I want to share, I suppose. And it's the win, win, win. Yeah, I make, I make this site that's very interactive and, you know, people can do it and not do it. Uh, you know, they do it for a while and then they say, that was cool. <laughs> and then, you know, a couple of months <laughs> whiz by and, and that life is the way it is. And who knows, I might even be here when you come back. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking to yourself there? Because you're the one that's going somewhere <laughs> when you come back from Australia. <laughs> well, when you come back, I mean, for those people that to come and go, you know, and then I'm here for these last well, five see. years. Yes. For these last five years, I'm here, you know, yeah. and then I will be or I won't be. And I don't know. I'm pretty damn healthy, you know, <laughs> and I'm really older than you think. And it doesn't really matter. And uh, so pretty amazing life and then there you go <laughs> so I'm just telling people you know you know uh, engage have a fun this is such a joy you know <laughs> and then uh, and then I'm saying these amazing times you know I'm saying well wherever I look somebody's talking to me of course I might have started but who knows they're, they're talking back they're not saying hey wait a minute what do you want they're uh, they're really talking from their heart you know, and uh, then I'm thinking that never happened to me before. Was that my fault or what? <laughs> you know, I don't know. And I'm just saying, well, maybe it's catchy. I'll talk about it and put it on the table and say, uh, hey, you could you give it a try. See if it works. It is catchy. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderfully. You know. Yeah. It's infectious. Yes. The most wonderful infection, love. Yeah, it's love, Embracing right? Embracing itself. Oh, yeah. 
Well, how, you know, and, and when you look at it directly and experience and you speak about it right now, it occurs here that it's love, that it's love embracing itself. And, um, so, you know, like, what a better way to fix the world if, you know, fixing is part of it. I mean, because, like, uh, it's the only thing that'll work, actually, and it's the only thing that's fun, see? <laughs> Absolutely true. And so then, uh, why not start doing it just for the fun of it? And if it happens to have some side effects, great. You know, and if it's not love, then let it be respect, or let it be tolerance, or let it be openness, or let it be uh, curiosity, or anything in between there, you know? And then maybe you'll notice, oh, wow, that is even more than all those things, you know? That's more than respect. I really do like this. I love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. always, I always find that's always really the case is um, <laughs> I love, I love them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, and just maybe one more quick topic, though maybe it deserves a little more time than what we're going to give it now, is... When I, when I notice the negativity that I think I see out there, it's like I can't see it out there without interpretation happening here, including the interpretation that is actually out there. So one of, one of the most beneficial um, noticings of a mechanism in myself that I've seen is this mechanism is noticing this mechanism to project that the cause of conflict is outside is separate from myself. When I, when I feel when I move into my actual move, isn't the right word. When I relax into my natural experience, my actual experience of what's happening, I see that the negativity that looks to be happening out there, the conflict that looks to be coming from out there, that it's actually, there's this way that light is being shined, shined, shown, shined, <laughs> inside of a construct, inside of a construct. So it's actually illuminating something inside. And if the attention goes out there and tells a story of my problem is him, my problem is this situation, then... It's the bankers, it's corporate greed, any one of those inter interpretations. Of, yeah. Yeah, then, then the light isn't being used yeah. for its actual purpose, which is to shine light on yeah. something that has been held, you know, some belief that's been held, in order to be this love for that place that doesn't know, that hasn't relaxed into its own being yet, hasn't realized that it's more of myself, right. love loving itself. No, I see that totally. I love it. I totally love it. You know, that I get the light a lot because I can really act. I can act it out and get the feelings, you know. Oh, those guys, those corporate greedy guys. How could they, you know, the things that... that Oh, that they cause and it just makes me tense up like this and but i never really go jump to you know i say corporate greed and stuff but i don't really believe it whatsoever i don't believe uh in any kind of malfeasance or anything and i don't somehow i just just don't go there as far as like yeah that's it you know i just realize that we're in this together even everyone is in this together and whether that means unity or what it means i just Somehow I realize that, and I coach it too, because when I go to talk to these Occupy or anything like that, I kind of steer people away from blame and away from issues and away, you know, there's plenty of injustice, but somehow that's not the real focal point right now. And that's how I coach, anyhow. I don't know if that's that's a correct, uh, you know, not correct, <laughs> but I mean, you know, that's useful. I think it's very useful, right? I mean, it's just... Uh, it's, it sounds well, you're naturally useful. being you, yeah. yeah. You know, one thing, corporate thing, to it appears to me, um, and it may appear this way to other people, I don't, I don't know, that, you know, those people that look like they're the um, head of the, the greed scene, 
the perpetrators. I mean, what? Yeah, the perpetrators. I mean, compassion to them to show up as awareness in that position. Um, you know, imagine what if everybody instead of uh, calling them wrong, uh, recognize them as an expression of awareness that somehow is uh, expressing a uh, whatever a contraction of the humanness that that's how it's it's coming to light um, is through these people that are are unbeknownst to themselves willing to go so far off um, and play this part of, of the bad guy because um, you know it's not likely that it's feeling very good um, I would imagine no so, I mean I, I I was reading something like oh you know, it was Paulson talking, who was the Secretary of the Treasury uh, two years ago when they, he just decided to let Lehman Brothers go bankrupt. And everything froze up, you know, like nobody would trade anymore. The trading just went to a dead stop for a couple of days. And like he was totally freaked out, you know, because the poor guy, I mean, he, it's like his decision to let those guys go under is seemingly was going to make the world financial system crash, the whole world. This guy was under that gun, you know, and then so thank God it wasn't me, you know, thank God that he took that on for me so that I could see it, but not have to do it. Mm -hmm. Not be it, yeah. Play that part. It's just one way to meet what looks to be out of balance on the appearance of what rises in, in awareness. Um, Why can't you just say it's out of balance? Do you have to say well, it appears out of balance? Yeah, because it, it doesn't, it's completely whole. All of it is in play it's of wholly, its own wholly out of so balance, right? <laughs> it is, it, well, it is holy, actually. It's very sacred. <laughs> and um, it's, it's healing itself. It occurs, it looks like that's what it's attempting to do. And so where... Yeah, it but it's healing itself with my energy. participation and my awareness, right? Or is it healing itself without my awareness? I could just kind of blank out my eyes and, and go to the Bahamas and it'll heal itself? Um, if that feels really true, if you don't feel to be, res res you aren't responding to it. You know, I, I'm going to Mexico, <laughs> but uh, at the same time, I, I do feel compassion. Um, and maybe, you know, in this no time, no space, does that compassion to those people that look to be um, the forerunners of of you know, what's erupting right now in our times. Um, does that compassion, well, it makes it, you know, it makes a difference here with this canela, certainly. Does it actually affect anything um, with those people? I don't know. But maybe in a grand scale, if a lot of people did, what a lot people? of awareness. Affect anything back. with what people? Just be a little more specific, please. As an invitation to people to feel compassion for these men instead of counting them as wrong and wanting them to be punished or that they should be different than they are to recognize them as taking on a pretty you know hefty role in our society in our our expression of the humanness that's happening in these times uh, in in this way that um, to feel some compassion for them if that's possible if it's at all true um, and that compassion is is a form of love um, continuing to hold them over there as something wrong, uh, for sure that's not supporting uh, love. Uh, offering your compassion, your real compassion towards them um, includes them as a human being who is willing to play this role. Um, and right away in that inclusion, that does change the energy. And it changes the energy of how you feel about them in the moment as well, which is a win-win. Um, well, that's I don't the know fundamental part, isn't it? Change in your energy. Well, that, that occurs at the same simultaneously. As soon as you're compassionate, uh, feeling compassion, um, certainly that changes the vibration of the, the whole of, of the oneness of, of what's actually occurring as awareness.
and it's just an invitation. Not how you should be. You know, it's only if it can be true. It's just an invitation. Invitations are so important because uh, so many times it never crosses our mind what the options are. And uh, somebody just says, hey, hey, you can do that, you know. Oh, really? <laughs> I didn't think of that. <laughs> Many people take that as a hocus pocus, right? That if I just think the right thoughts, everything will work out. Keep the space, hold the space. There's too many interpretations. Those are interpretations too. Thanks for including that topic, Ramana. Absolutely. <laughs> we laughed, we cried. <laughs> <laughs> we silence. <laughs> really enjoyable. <laughs> Thank you so much, both of you. It's it was very very enjoyable. Absolutely, totally, totally too much fun. <laughs> there ought to be a law. I got to pay you guys now. <laughs> oh, thanks so much. Yeah. Thank hey, you, Rich. Thanks, Canela. Canela Michelle Myers and Ramana, Ramana Spencer. So nice to meet you. So nice to meet you. Thank you for everyone for watching and we're going to make an exciting uh, summer. See, I'm not going to go to winter. <laughs> That's your deal. <laughs> I'm going to summer. <laughs> so it's going to be exciting and uh, please follow me along. Actually, I changed the website and I got a, a new tab called tour. Everything is going to go on tour. And then the homepage will move a little slower because I think the homepage is going to move so fast. I got scared that people that uh, are new uh, will wonder what we're doing, you know, <laughs> we're going too fast, so. Speaking of the website, Richard, where is it that people can make their donation? <laughs> if, they, <laughs> if they feel to. <laughs> uh, get involved. Get involved. Come on, get involved. That's my whole message. Okay. Get involved. Okay, so it's the get involved, <laughs> get involved tab. They can find a donation button there. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's great. And, you know, I, I would like to also uh, mention this Canela being in Chicago. It's still, I'm moving more into winter <laughs> at the end of the month. So um, people are invited to join us for that. Right. I think we'll have this up in time. Okay. December 3rd, 4th, and 5th. And right. 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, or something like that, right? 5th is where you can make a private session. Thanks, Canelo. Thank you, Richard. Bye, my lovers. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you. I love you. I love Bye. you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs>